Greetings in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. All wise and eternal God, our Father, we pause at this moment to acknowledge your sovereignty as we thank you for another opportunity to declare your word. Speak now, Lord, your servant hearing. May the meditations of this heart and the words of this mouth be found pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are our collective strength and our redeemer. Speak, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Yahshua the Messiah, we ask you with gratitude. And everyone said together, Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, verses chapter 20, chapter 2, verses 16, 17, and 18. Matthew chapter 2, verses 16, 17, and 18. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and younger, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, In Ramah there is a voice heard, lamentation, weeping, and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. For a few moments, I want you to think with me on a very serious subject. Black lives still matter. Black lives still matter. David was a black shepherd king, the king of Israel, who declared these words, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, verse 14. Over the last two and a half months that we have been sheltering in place, the incidents that we have witnessed throughout the television networks, it is clear that this phrase, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, apparently does not apply to black and brown people in America. But with the last 11 days of protest, both around this country, across this globe, an historical shift is taking place. Dr. Martin Luther King said that what we are actually witnessing, we are literally singing the arc of the moral universe that is long, and it is bending toward justice. This week I witnessed myself, the largest crowd in Charlotte, North Carolina history, walking with the NAACP, walk with over 2,000 black, whites, Latinos, youth, children, and seniors. One poster that stuck with my heart said this, all lives won't matter until all black lives matter. So we pause on this first Sunday to not only acknowledge that black lives matter, but to lament, to mourn, and to reflect. So I'm removing my white robe on this communion Sunday, though I'm looking forward to doing communion with my church family very, very soon. I'm intentionally wearing black today. Black in this pulpit serves a dual purpose. First, black still means black lives still matter. Second, black is the universal symbol of mourning. June 2nd was known as Blackout Tuesday. Thursday, June 4th, was declared as the National Day of Mourning as millions observed the memorial service for George Floyd. It was held in Minneapolis. I'm sure that we have felt then and we feel now exactly the same waves of emotion that swept through the city of Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. I weep now and I've wept this week. 
Just like the mothers and families of Matthew, the second chapter, verse 18. After Herod has killed all of the male children, the young black men of Bethlehem, two years and under, in his effort to extinguish his rival, the Christ child, the tax collector, Matthew, quotes the prophet Jeremiah in the 18th verse. He says, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, a great mourning. Rachel is weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because her children, they are not. This verse could read differently for us in 2020. A voice is heard in America, Sabrina weeping for Trayvon Martin, Leslie weeping for Michael Brown, Gwen weeping for Eric Gardner, Tamika weeping for Breonna Taylor, Wanda weeping for Ahmaud Aubrey, and Roxy, along with her six-year-old daughter, Gigi, the daughter of George Floyd. Too many mothers are still in pain. Too many of our sons and daughters are still being slain. As the protests remind us of the injustice that has been done, let us stop and pause and lament, mourn, and reflect. Reflect on the life that was memorialized this week. Pause with me now. Let us pray and reflect for eight minutes, 46 seconds. The time that Officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into the neck of George Floyd until he died. Let us remember and let us pray. Emmett Till. Raymond Gardner. Sam Post. Wendy Gail Thompson. James Willie Cooper. Trayvon Martin. Michael Brown. Laquan McDonald. Tamir Rice. Scott. Freddie Gray.
Sean Bell. Samuel DeVos. Christian Taylor. Akilia Gurley. Philando Castillo. Terrence Crutcher. Keith Lamont Scott. Jonathan Farrell. Christopher McCorby. Michael Lorenzo Dean. Oscar Grant. Alan Bluford. Chavis Carter. Tim Stansberry. Ezell Ford. Grandmother Graham. Dane Scott. Philip the Nail. Wendell Allen. Patrick Dorisman. Victor Steen. Kendrick McKay. Kim and Gray. Armand Bennett. Usman Zango. John Crawford. Johnny Gamich.
Gus Bradley. Kayla Moore, Nakia Boyd, Eleanor Bumpers, Chantel Davis, Miriam Corey, Shelly Frey, Michelle Cusack, Alberta Spruill, Megan Hockaday, Tanisha Anderson, Letitia McKinney, Alexia Christian, Sandra Bland, Amado Dilio, Brianna Taylor, Bothan John, Ahmad Aubrey. and George Floyd. Last words, George Floyd, before he called for his mother, whom I believe was extending her hand from glory to his. His last words denote what African Americans have felt for the last 401 years in this country. Just three words, I can't breathe. I can't breathe because of hate and racism, structural, institutionalized, systemic racism that has its knee on the necks of African Americans for the last 401 years. But change is coming. We have the audacity to hope. We have the skills to legislate. We have the boots to march. We have the spirit to never give up. And we can be the change that we are looking for. I can't breathe because the weight of the memories of so many individuals from Emmett Till and Raymond Gunn to Sam Host all killed by lynch mobs the memories of modern lynching, we call it police brutality today. These, this chart of all of these individuals, the sons and daughters from Wendy Gale Thompson who was shot in a car while she was wrecked, from Jonathan Farrell, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, all killed by white police officers or died in the custody of the police of the police officers under questionable circumstances. I can't breathe because I'm weary of the collective pain using another son or daughter's name for the next hashtag. I want to say hashtag enough is enough. I can't breathe. We can't breathe due to the constant racial profiling that started with driving while black, turned into jogging while black, turned into bird watching while black, turned into having a cup of coffee at Starbucks while black, turned into selling cigarettes while black, just walking with a bag of Skittles while black. I can't breathe because of the health disparities that already existed in the black community that accelerated and impact all of us with this COVID-19, causing black and brown people to lead in all the categories of infections as well as deaths. We can't breathe as long as structural policies and barriers remain in place, preventing all of us from economic mobility. Oh, but the spirit and the energy that is moving across this planet, waking up all of us that we might remove the knee from the neck of our collective destinies. I can't breathe when the supposed leader of the free world allows flash bombs and tear gas to scatter peaceful protesters, to clear a path for him to go and stand in front of a church for a photo op, a church where he doesn't worship, holding up a sacred text that he doesn't read. 
I can't breathe, we can't breathe. When the United States Senate cannot seem to pass a bipartisan Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, Senate Resolution 39, the very same day that George Floyd is having his memorial service, while we live in a country that has a legacy of over 5,000 lynchings. I can't breathe because me, like so many of my brothers as a black man, just driving across town is an act that potentially puts my life at risk simply because of the color of my skin. I can't breathe because I am constantly having to remind my children and even my son of the reality that they face every time they step out of the safety of their doors. I know it's been difficult to breathe, my brothers and my sisters, especially these last three months. COVID-19, sickness and death surrounding us, unemployment anxieties, trying to make ends meet, the stress of the state at home orders, the deaths of Ahmad, Brianna, and George. But when God showed me this text, this text in chapter 2 of Matthew, that 18th verse, it says again in Ramah, there was a voice heard lamenting and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children. God showed me another text that even after weeping, there comes another voice, just seven verses down into the third chapter of Matthew, introducing John the Baptist. And it says, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. That is what is happening right now. The way is being prepared for the power of the Lord to manifest right in front of our eyes. This is what is needed in these critical times. Voices that are declaring the truth. Voices that are speaking to power. Voices that are declaring the truth in the wilderness wherever we are. So my prayer for each of us during this season of mourning, during this lament, during this pandemic, this season of rapid change, just two things. Number one, just find your voice. Don't let anybody hush your voice. Find your voice in this pandemic wilderness as people all over this world are waking up and we're watching the paradigm of consciousness shift right in front of our faces. Align yourself with the word of God. Stand on these eternal promises. Stand on these eternal principles. Find your voice. Take time to sit down with your family. Sit down and listen to your children. Hear their hearts and help them to understand that they need to be encouraged by your voice to not only walk by faith, but to walk by faith and not by sight. Find your voice. Take the authority that you have as an ambassador of Christ. Declare his word before you. Declare his word around you. Declare his word over your family. Plead the blood of Christ over everything that you want to see happen in your future. Find your voice. Declare God's word over your family, over your friends, over your church, and over your future calling those things that are not as though they already were. James Baldwin, the author, said it like this, not everything that we face can be changed, but nothing can be changed until we face it. This is the season that we are doing just that. We are facing what we want to be changed. Satan, take your knee off of our collective necks. Stand up and declare who you are in Christ. Take your knee off of all of us. Find your voice. Find your voice and vote in these next 150 days. If you've never been excited about trying to get others registered and get them to vote, find your voice and get them to the polls. My God, we've got to vote this time. Find your voice and continue to pray the will of God in your life be done. 
be done in your family, be done in your home, be done in your community, be done in our city, be done in this state. My God, be done in this country. And finally, number two, stop waiting to exhale. Now, I love Terry McMillan. I love Whitney Houston and I love Angela Bassett. But this is not 1995, this is 2020. And I know that the pressures of life are constant, but you do not have to wait to exhale any longer. God is still in charge. God has got your back and God has got my back. We are watching history unfold right before our eyes. Things are accelerating, things are speeding up. So if there's never been a time that you trust God, trust God now. Look at your neighbor right there beside you in your kitchen, on your, in the patio, wherever you are. Ask them, do you trust him? My God, if there ever was a time to just stretch out on faith and trust him, this is that time. So do me a favor. Take a deep breath and exhale. Relax. Let go. And let God, he's still in charge. David said, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thy envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass. They will wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and thy verily shall be fed. He said, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Just watch, my brothers and sisters. Relax and watch God do what he is always expected to do in this season. Today, as we collectively mourn, and as we unapologetically Declare that black lives still matter. Find your voice. Stop waiting to exhale. Let go and let God. Never forget, weeping may endure for a night. Oh, but joy will come in the morning. Joy is coming, my brothers and sisters. Joy is coming. And I say a shout out as I close to Reverend Frederick Massey, Brother Farad Massiel and his family who are literally standing on the street on 16th Street in Washington, D.C., even at this very moment, walking up the street that's already been paved with a mural, Black Lives Matter, leading right to the White House. If you don't know like I know, believe that God is up to something good. God bless you and have a wonderful day week to come. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, go before us now. Continue to help us find our voice. Continue, God, to help us to exhale and relax knowing that the Most High God is still in control. We surrender all things into your hands with gratitude. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you on this day. In the marvelous name of he who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, Yahshua the Messiah, we pray. And let us all say, Amen. God bless you.